Hello and welcome to the sixth episode of my series on Emacs. Uh, this time I'm going to be talking about some vanilla Emacs settings. Um, all of these are completely optional and they are obviously just up to personal preference. So the things we're going to look at are getting rid of this initial startup screen so you don't see that anymore, uh, hiding the toolbar up here, hiding the menu bar up here, hiding the scroll bar, uh, sharing line numbers, uh, toggling them on, on and off, highlighting the current line that your cursor is on, um, deleting the selection, your current selection, and saving the um, kind of temporary files in a different place. Um, Aaron, I'll also show you matching parentheses. So actually, let's open up. Um, what should we open up? Have we still got test.py? We do. OK, so we'll do it on here. So. And we'll also open up our emacsd. Uh, for you, it's probably your init.el, but I'm doing it in my tut.el. Um, so the things that we're going to use, uh, so to are all all kind of global things to Emacs. So we don't need a package. We don't need to use use package or anything like that. So the things we're going to look at are so no startup message. So to remove the message, the Emacs screen when you start Emacs. So if we, um, in here, we need to set Q inhibit startup message to true. And then if we uh, close Emacs, open Emacs up again, open tut. Don't know why I keep doing that. And then as you can see, we've opened Emacs and we've gone straight to the scratch buffer. So if you want to do that, you can. Uh, some people like it. There are other plugins that replace the startup screen with a dashboard, which I use, which I'll do another video on at some point. So if we open up our um, inner L again, nope, not the inner L for here, the tut.l. Go down to the bottom. So some other things that we can do. So some of these we can toggle on and off just by putting in a command. So toolbar mode, I just toggle it. And then as you can see at the top, toolbar's gone. Toolbar mode again, toolbar mode, and it comes back. To make that happen or to hide the toolbar all the time in your set in your configuration, you can do toolbar mode minus one. And if you want to show it, it'd be one. So I'm going to do minus one. And I'm actually going to turn it off right now toolbar mode so we'll turn it off so we can kind of update as we go to see what it'll look like before without having to restart emacs um what else have we got menu bar so if you don't want to see the menu bar the menu bar as i said before can be useful so if you're in a certain so we're in emacs lisp now so it's got some extra stuff if i open up the um uh test.py file look we've now got a python menu so that's quite useful um, for jumping around and learning keyboard shortcuts. But if you want to get rid of it, you can do menu bar mode minus minus one. So if we just menu bar mode, turn it off. There you go. No menu bar. What else should we get rid of? Scroll bar. So you've guessed it. Scroll bar mode minus one. Scroll bar mode. Scroll bar's gone. So really simple stuff. Um, so highlight the current line. Guess what? It's also a mode, but it's HL, highlight line. Line mode plus one. So if we uh, global highlight line mode, do that. And as you can see now, the line that we're on is highlighted when we change line. Um, so delete selection mode is a funny one. So if I do just write some text and then I highlight that text. Whoops. I highlight that text and then I want to change. Maybe I wanted to change text to numbers. I, I just wanted it to be one, two, three. Just write some one, two, three. If I now type one, two, three, it inserts it and doesn't delete. So what uh, delete selection mode does means that when you select something and start typing, it first deletes what you've selected and then what you type replaces it. So otherwise you have to like to backspace or delete first. So delete selection mode one. 
So now if I also run that, delete selection mode, if I then replace this, I can say replace. Great, so that's working. What else do we want? Um, so one of the things I like to do is save my, like the backup directory. So the backup files. So when you're editing, before you save, there is a backup file that gets created and you can change where that file is saved. I like to save that in my home directory under a hidden folder that's called saves. So you can do set to queue. So backup directory, directory a list. And then the arguments for that are can just be the path to where you want it. And I'll execute that. And just execute it with um control X control E. Um what else is there? So that's saving those um showing line numbers. So to show line numbers it's a bit more um I think you could probably do display line numbers mode to put it on but generally so when i'm working in org files or just text files i don't want line numbers to be on all the time so uh, i only want it when we're in a programming language there is a programming language mode which is like a major mode or a minor i'm not even sure if it's a major or well it must be a major because it's got a hook uh, that's not true anyway there is a program programming mode and there's a hook for that so you can just add hook prog mode hook and then display line numbers mode so whenever you're in a programming mode um, it'll show so if I just exit Emacs again So we've added line numbers now. Um, so if we open uh, test.py, we have line numbers. We can only see one less have some lines. But then if we create a new buffer, um, test.org, just in this buffer, we don't have any line numbers. But if we then put prog mode, we get line numbers and then if we go to org mode we get rid of line numbers simple as that um kill that buffer oh uh, yeah kill pi okay so what do we have left the last thing that i think we should look at is matching parentheses so actually we do want our test.py um, so in this we show paren mode one or show paren mode so then if we do this and this and testing one two three you can see that those um, those parentheses are highlighted and if we go back to tut.l you'll now see that when we hover over some of these they parentheses get highlighted so it's quite useful for this kind of thing you can see that there's there because with especially with elisp actually this is a better example with elisp you can get a lot of brackets a lot of parentheses so it's very useful for seeing that so to show that we just need to show paren mode one and that should be it um so really quickly went through these so don't show startup message. Don't show toolbar. Don't show menu. Don't show scroll bar. Highlight line. Delete selection. Different backup directory. So it does, the save files aren't saved in, on, at the same uh, directory as the file that you're editing is. Uh, display line numbers in when pro 
programming and show matching parenthesis. There we go. Really quick, but uh, hopefully that'll help you remove the things that you don't want on the screen. As you can see, it's now very clean. It goes uses all of my screen um, right up to the top, right up to the bottom. No scroll bar, nothing. So that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Um, I appreciate if you have watched and if you like what you've seen, consider uh, subscribing and liking if you're on YouTube. And if you're on library, consider following and tipping. Uh, thanks a lot. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye.